Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you had a nice break or those of you who are just joining us for the afternoon of day four of the BC Digital Health Forum. My name is Tina Costa. I'm one of the directors of the Office of Virtual Health, continuing to have the pleasure to be your host for these virtual sessions. For those of you who are just joining in today into our virtual circle, just encourage you to share in our collective gratitude for the opportunity to come together from many traditional ancestral and unceded territories of BC First Nations. Let us continue to give thanks for the opportunity to gather, learn, collaborate, and provide care on such beautiful lands. I now have the pleasure of introducing our first afternoon session. Our next presenters include Simi Callan and Kara Shaw. Simi is the Director for Clinical Education at PHSA. She also works as a simulation faculty um, faculty member for the Extracorporeal Life Support Organization, as well as an instructor for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Kara is a clinical leader with the Office of Virtual Health. She works with clinical programs across the province to identify opportunities for growth and support the implementation of virtual health solutions. Without further ado, we'll get the afternoon started and I will hand it over to Simi and Kara for their talk on a learner-centered approach to orientation for remote patient monitoring staff. Simi, Kara, over to you. Okay, thank you so much, Tina. Just needed to get off mute. That was the first step there. Um, so welcome everybody, really happy to be here. Um, so my name is Kara and I'm and today I'm going to be presenting with Simi and we are going to be talking about a project that we were both a part of, which was the development of a new uh, remote patient monitoring nurse role within BCEHS. Um, so providing remote patient monitoring is a new model of care delivery for many clinicians and requires educators to adapt orientation processes in order to build on the learner's clinical skills and critical thinking abilities, while at the same time incorporating effective use of virtual solutions and technology in delivering patient care. So this presentation will highlight what challenges there are in current orientation processes and what strategies we use to develop an effective orientation, really highlighting that we need to reevaluate our education and orientation process as we continue to move from traditional in-person care to virtual uh, care delivery. So I just want to acknowledge that with, with gratitude that we are gathered on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Squamish, uh, Musqueam and tsleil nations who have nurtured and cared for the lands and waters around us for all time. So I give thanks for the opportunity to live, work and support care here. Okay, so we all know that feeling when we arrive to our first day of work at a new job, meeting new people, understanding your role within that organization and how it fits with the different roles um, that you'll be working with. Um, all the new policies and procedures and a brand new culture that you need to adjust to. And most of the time, an incredible amount of information coming your way. It can definitely be overwhelming. Um, and the question really is, is it all necessary? So effective orientation is really a fine art and an act of balancing of what one needs to know to practice safely and what is nice to know in order to be aware of all the possibilities. So often our approach in healthcare is not learner-centered or based on adult learning principles, but focused on trying to provide staff with all that they will ever need to know. This is a great idea, but it's not feasible, feasible if we want people to actually learn new information, retain that information, and really feel confident in their new role, which ultimately will lead them uh, with the ability to contribute effectively to their team and to their organization. So just going back um, to our presentation today, we'll be discussing an initiative that was spearheaded by uh, BC Emergency Health Services uh, and the development of the remote patient monitoring nurse role. So throughout this project, it became really clear very early that the collaboration between teams was imperative to this role's success. Incorporating a brand new role into practice, while at the same time we were exploring, exploring a new model of care, really required us that we came together and really build, it, build on each other's knowledge. So this photo above was taken during a simulation at BCEHS, where we had members of the Office of Virtual Health, uh, BCEHS, and PHSA Professional Practice and Education all coming together to see this role in action. So this really provides an example of the collaboration in real time, um, really looking at how this role will be incorporated within current workflows and teams, while at the same time leveraging clinical skills and ensuring that this nurse feels supported, confident, 
um, and practicing within their scope. So one of our main priorities in developing our orientation was that we were supporting both the learner and the facilitator. So just kind of highlighting some of the current challenges in orientation. Um, so we all know that having the time to revisit an evaluation orientation, sorry, evaluate orientation processes is always limited due to time and staffing. So how can we prepare orientation materials that are adaptive to change and ensure sustainability? Many healthcare educators do not actually have expertise in adult education, but rather clinical expertise. So how can we ensure that we're supporting and educating our facilitators and providing them with the tools that they need to onboard staff effectively? Delivering education in a clinical world is its own specialty. We have to acknowledge that we work within a very complex environment that is constantly facing new challenges and changes. So we really need to take this into consideration and develop materials that are comprehensive. Um, and, and finally, virtual health technology is new to everybody. So we are really accustomed to educating and onboarding staff in traditional healthcare environments, such as hospital, community care, or clinics. But as we move to more integration of virtual health, we need to ensure we're not only supporting our new learners and staff, but also our leaders and educators who may not have experienced um, providing virtual health care themselves. Okay, so just looking back, we finally got better at delivering orientation that supported new staff who delivered care within traditional in-person environments. But with the encouragement of COVID-19, we saw an explosion of virtual health into practice. Our healthcare system had to implement virtual solutions quickly with limited time to focus on proper orientation and training. We have the opportunity, opportunity now to reflect on the challenges and opportunities that virtual health presented us and move forward toward comprehensive and robust education for clinical providers. We really need to remember that we're working within a complex learning environment that encompasses delivery of care within virtual environments, as well as collaboration within a multidisciplinary team in a unique environment. So how can we do this? So I'm just gonna provide a brief introduction to our approach in creating our orientation materials, and then I'll let Simi provide some more details. So going back to what we discussed earlier, the collaboration between members of the team was really instrumental in this initiative's success. We also focused on understanding our learners. That was really important for us, really trying to build on their clinical experience and their skills um, and understanding what or onboarding materials were already in place. So how can we build on the current orientation processes that will fit the specific needs and goals for this unique role? Um, understanding the environment and how the RPM nurse role fit into that and worked with the other members of the team was really important. Um, we wanted to build for a continuum of learning. So throughout this entire process, I feel we had to constantly remind ourselves what was essential for this nurse to know. I remember Simi constantly reminding us that we didn't need to teach this nurse everything, although that's, you know, sometimes what we wanted to do was throw every detail into this orientation. Um, but we really need to come back and focus on what was essential and what was important for their learning at the beginning of this journey into their new role. Um, also, we really wanted to support the scope and professional practice standards of this learner. Coming from a nursing background and going into a unique role in a unique environment really had the, uh, really required us to look at, um, you know, professional practice standards for the learner to support their, their, um, their delivery of care. Um, and finally, we wanted to build sustainable orientation materials so that this could be used in the future and so that they could build on and elaborate as things changed and, and so that they could adapt to, to, new, to new changes in, the, in their organization and as new learners came in. So I'll just pass it over to Simi uh, to walk us through the steps in more detail. Thanks, Kara. And hopefully everybody can hear me. Um, so just to dive a little bit more into the, those steps that Kara just um, so beautifully kind of articulated, really the first step that we needed to do was really understand our learner. And in this case, our learner was a nurse. Um, we knew that they were looking for a registered nurse. So that's good because there are different levels of nurses. Um, and then, you know, we were kind of like, are we going to be getting a new grad? Will we be getting an experienced or maybe somewhere, someone in between? And realizing that until we hired this individual, we may not know that information. So really making sure that we take into 
you know, while we're building, taking into fact that we may have a new grad, like a new novice nurse, or we may have someone with some experience within the remote um, care environment. Um, so that was really important for us to make sure we're looking at foundational objectives and learning from the orientation. The other piece that we really wanted to take into account was, again, what does nursing education look like? And what are the clinical experiences that nurses gather in their education throughout their careers? And, you know, most of our education as nurses, I'm a nurse from background, so when I say us, that's what I'm referring to. Um, but, you know, our experience is really hospital limited or maybe some community care. But it's not a lot of that pre-hospital environment where BCHS has is it, that's their bread and butter. And so that was a big component for us to consider is that this is going to be a new care environment and a new way of delivering care and a new team to be delivering care with as well. You know, the other thing we realize is as nurses, we tend to, you know, most of our experiences with physicians, with different allied health professionals, other nurses, but we don't work intimately with paramedics unless maybe you're in the emergency department um, kind of environment. So that was the other piece for us to be like, okay, we really actually need to make sure we're building a bit of context and, and really housing the nurse in what does this role look like and where will they kind of fit into it? Um, and then the entire, the idea that, you know, BCHS has their own systems that they use um, that we've never been educated in, um, their own technology that they use. And, you know, even that language, right? Like there's a different language that we use based on the environments that we work in. So those are all the different pieces that we really needed to understand about our learner and then tie in all of our adult learning principles to help us guide and build our kind of onboarding program, I guess you could say. The other two steps that we really kind of reached into was let's look at, and Kara, Kara mentioned this, right? Like, let's look into BCHS and say, what do you guys do for your paramedics currently? Because what can we pull from there? What can we leverage? Um, and what is the stuff that needs to be different or maybe doesn't apply to the nurse role? You know, at the very beginning, we were all really excited about this work and we were like, let's teach them everything. Um, and let, let's put them in the dispatch center and let's send them on an ambulance ride. And then we were like, hold on, you know, again, that kind of mental check within the team to say, what is the purpose? of this role. And it is already going to be very overwhelming and different for a nurse in this environment. So let's get them custom to that, to that environment. And then maybe we can look at, hey, maybe at six months, maybe it would be interesting to learn more about what does paramedicine look like so that they can understand that bigger picture. Um, but, you know, we wanted to see what can we leverage? What can we take from the paramedic orientation? What can we use and what can we, what do we need to do differently as well? So almost like a bit of an analysis between what does the nurse's roles and responsibilities in this role look like? And what is the current orientation for paramedics in this area? The other thing we really need to look at is what technology will the nurse be using to provide patient care and to document their care. So what is that? What does that look like? And what are those workflows so that we can make sure that we're we're building uh, with those in mind? Um, and then, you know, facilitators have different backgrounds. Um, we really wanted to make sure that we were pulling in all the right people. Um, you'll hear Karen and I say continuously collaboration, 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 because um, I am not a paramedic. Karen is not a paramedic. I am not an expert in, in virtual care. That was Kara and her team. Um, and it was really like a, a beautiful combination of all of us coming together and really appreciating our variants, uh, our different um, specialties really to help build this forward. And then really we use, use based on all of our context, we were like, okay, we need some observation. We need some videos um, that we can do reflective practice with. We need some case studies and simulation. And again, this is all to really develop that clinical reasoning and that clinical decision-making that the nurse needs to do not having had any experiential knowledge, but we can build that experiential knowledge through these kind of techniques of education. And the, the goal of all of this is to enhance their ability to problem solve when they actually start to take care of patients um, and build some confidence in that as they go forward. The other piece that we really wanted to look at was we really needed to build for the continuum of learning. And, you know, this is something that is near and dear to my heart, um, trying to move away from front loading everybody with a lot of information, but 
you know, people learn throughout their entire journey as a pro as a professional. So what is that nice to know versus that need to know? What do I need to know in order to do my roles and responsibilities well and safely and build my confidence in doing so? And what is the stuff that I can start to build on to? So, you know, maybe you're not going to be... Um, doing everything on day one, but at three months, that's might be when I want to do a little bit more conflict resolution, or maybe that's where I want to build in some motivational interviewing tools. Um, but I don't necessarily need that on day one. You know, day one, I just kind of need to know where do I sign in and how do I log in and who is my buddy, right? Like, you know, basic stuff that I think we all kind of feel when we start new, um, but sometimes we forget when we're building our programs. Um, and we really, you know, what we did was we really took that blended learning approach. So, you know, again, I, I love the flip classroom approach. Let's let's develop a manual. Let's give them something up front that they can read. They can take their time with. They can ask questions um, and then they come in and then they start to participate. But they've got some knowledge and some understanding and some context prior to even coming into a facilitated session. And then through those facilitated sessions, using different techniques like observation. So watching a paramedic walk through the, the technology um, because they're the experts at it and then building in their own experience as well. Um, and really that observational and that problem solving through case studies and simulation. Um, you know, really, I think move, thinking of simulation as more than just how to do a skill, but simulation in the, like, you know, I'm going to call a patient and I'm going to walk through a successful call. And that's my first sim. And my next simulation might be, I have a patient that's not doing well on the phone. Now I need to reach out to a paramedic specialist and get guidance on how to escalate their care. So it could be communication. That's what we did. We kind of were like, okay, so what are some communication-based uh, simulations that we can do? And what are some technology or workflow types of simulations that we can do to help build that experiential knowledge that they were kind of needing so much? Um, and really introducing concepts over a period of time, right? So I think we all kind of can see that and and keeping it fun and keeping it engaging, but making sure it's built in with that. What we're trying to do is provide good patient care. Um, and then the really neat thing for us was where, you know, again, we had to pull on our professional practice colleagues was like as nurses being regulated professionals and having a different scope and practice and paramedics having their own scope and practice we really needed to make sure that everybody kind of understood where were the limits and where were the, where if there were boundaries in care what do we do when we reach that tipping point so can i reach out to a paramedic do i need to reach out to a physician and how do i do that in a con in this environment and so that was a really great kind of collaborative um, problem solving. And again, we kind of did that through simulation and case studies so that people, once they're in that situation, they've got some idea of, oh, this is how I did this in orientation. That's how I walked through it. And then finally, you know, um, I know the word standardization sometimes worries people, but I, in education, I think it's got a really nice place for it. And I think there, and, and the way we kind of did this was we really wanted to ensure that, you know, this was new for paramedics as well. So it wasn't just the nurse that was coming into a new environment, but paramedics were going to be working with nurses in a very paramedicine environment. And we wanted to ensure that they felt safe and comfortable onboarding nurses into this role and answering some of those critical questions that a nurse might have about, well, how do I get an order, for instance, that kind of stuff. And so we really wanted to make sure that we were able to build a good facilitation lesson plan, which is what we did with all the resources all into this one kind of big document that people could access and then suggestions. You could use a case study here. You could use a simulation. Um, this is a really great observational learning opportunity and some reflective questions and also providing the why so that if you're if it's a facilitator who maybe doesn't have a lot of experience in adult education, um, that they can understand why is it that we're recommending that activity and what is the purpose of it. So hoping to help build some um, knowledge kind of translation through our facilitators as well that way, because, you know, Many times we are great clinicians when we run into these roles. So just kind of trying to pull that piece out. And then, you know, we really wanted to make sure that we also had a continuing competency so that the nurse and the paramedics could feel that everybody is learning and growing together um, with good touchdown points and all that. So that was what we looked at when we thought about standardization is, could anybody pick this up 
and teach it and feel comfortable. And that's what we wanted um, to make sure that that sustainability was there and that flexibility. So these are the recommendations. But again, you're the facilitator, make it your own, put your own personality into it and really giving permission to do that. So they didn't feel as if they had to follow one path. So in conclusion, I think, you know, we are all we really care about what we do. We want to be patient centered. And really, when we're looking at orientation and onboarding, I think it's important to remember that remote care is new. And as much as we've all jumped into it, because we were kind of forced to, we need to also take a pause and ask ourselves, are we doing a good job at onboarding our staff into these environments? And to not just focus on the technology, but to put the technology into the workflow. So again, really housing them within that patient care experience and how do I deliver care using these technological tools and this remote care environment um, and building not only a good new staff, but also supporting our facilitators who are having to do a lot of this work. Thanks so much, Simi. Um, and so just to finish off, I just want to say that Simi and I, although we are here to present today, we were really fortunate to work with such a, a strong group of people. And as we've mentioned over and over again, the collaboration was really such a uh, imperative piece of this project. Um, and I think you know, not only was it instrumental in ensuring the success of this role, but it was also really enjoyable and a, a really great opportunity for us all to learn from each other. So I'm really fortunate to have been part of this project. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that was involved. Um, so just a shout out to the entire team. And thank you so much for listening today. Simi, Kara, thank you so much. You'll see some love coming up from the bottom of the screen. Um, and just want to read out a, a comment that came up in the chat. Someone saying, great presentation. Didn't realize that this session was on RPM specifically on registering, but really near to dear, near and dear to that particular person's heart. So thank you for that. It's really an interesting um, time where we're supporting staff in really new and very innovative roles or spaces that they haven't been in before. And so to anticipate what they might need is really hard. So appreciate your approach to being really mindful about that, really thoughtful about that process. Curious, um, what, you, what did you find were some of the key elements that a remote patient monitoring nurse might need that maybe those working in the traditional sort of uh, brick and mortar spaces may not need. I can take a stab at it. Oh, I'll take it from my perspective. Yeah. I, I think, you know, the thing that really popped out for me was understanding um, scope and practice. Um, because, you know, as a nurse in a hospital setting, when I need help, I pick up the phone and I call somebody or I have another buddy right next to me. I have a nurse who can jump in. Um, I think that was the piece. And, and it gave me a whole new appreciation for the paramedicine world and, mm -hmm. um, and how we can, you know, there are like differences, but how we can work together to give the care that we need. And so I think that was, for me, I was like a lot, like a big pause to be like, okay, hold on. What is the nurse's practice and scope and then what is it the what is the paramedics practice and scope and then what do we what's the gap in the middle that we need to figure out as a team so that we can ensure patients are still getting the care they need so that for me in this example particularly stood out because until we could understand that we couldn't just go ahead and start planning for education because that needed to be called out up front and center because it is unique in this example um Whereas maybe if you're doing remote patient monitoring within a hospital field, that may not be the same. Um, but I think it's a good pause and um, reflection always to think about what is the practice, what is the scope, and who is the team we're working with to provide care. Fantastic. Great. Care, anything to add? Yeah, no, I was going to say the same thing. Definitely the scope was top of mind for me, but I think it really was like the combination of of all of the things like into one in this unique role, which I think we're gonna see going into the future is that, you know, there's there's different members of the team. We're gonna start seeing virtual health in different environments. Um, and so like Simi said, like we, we knew how a nurse 
communicated and worked with a, a physician or a physio or an occupational therapist. Like as nurses, we feel comfortable having those conversations. So it was really interesting. And, and what we did when we um, had the simulations was really see how the nurse communicated with the paramedics and how they escalated care and what that meant for, you know, I'm not receiving an order or direction from this colleague, but we're, we're more collaborating on how to escalate care appropriately. And that really came down to scope and standard of like practice for the nurse. And so, and at the same time, you're delivering this through a virtual technology. So you have all these things coming together. And what we were really focusing on is making sure that that nurse felt really confident. So how do we do that? And it's really the education and the onboarding that, you know, kind of, um, it supports that learning, so. Thank you for that. Great answers, both of you. There is a question that's just come up um, and uh, you may have already spoke to them, but just curious to know what your favorite highlights on this project were. Uh, yeah, I can, oh, go ahead, Simi. <laughs> no, I was gonna say you go first this time. I feel like yeah, I had so many favorite moments of this. I'm trying to think of, of the, my most favorite, but I feel like we've said it so much, but for me, it was really a, such a big learning opportunity. I had the chance to work with a lot of different team members that I hadn't had the chance to work with before. So learning from Simi was, you know, amazing and working with our education teams and having those conversations, like those really constructive conversations where we all had these different ideas. And then we were kind of brought back to, you know, what was most important? What was our focus? What was our vision? And then being able to share that with the bigger team and kind of coming back to always what is the vision and goal for this role and, and seeing how everyone's ideas, you know, and ha added value to that. So for me, that was kind of the, you know, my favorite part of it for sure. Yeah. I, I would say, I would echo what Kara said. I, you know, I, I really loved it. I have to say, and I see Kelly's um, comment in the chat mm -hmm. and Kelly, I hope you saw our shout out to you. Um, but I, you know, I loved um, for me because I've been a critical care nurse most of my like 21 years of nursing. And, and for me, really seeing the, the paramedic environment and then they invite us into the clinical hub because we were kind of like, okay, so we're trying to teach people how they're going to work in this environment, but I don't even know what it looks like. Like I'm envisioning a room and it was just so fascinating to see from that side of the world. And for me, it opened up a whole lot of like, wow, we could be doing so many more things together. Like anybody who knows me knows I'm an idea person. And my brain was just like, bing, 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 bing. And, and I think to develop the partnerships between OVH, PHSA and BCHS was probably one of my favorite things. Cause now you, it feels like you can just email someone and be like, Hey, I have this idea. What do you mm -hmm. think? And, and it's nice to develop those kind of relationships amongst education and, and people who want to provide really good care to British Columbians. So I really loved that. Fantastic. Thank you both. Um, we will close the session just based on time to keep things moving, but I encourage anyone to reach out to Kara and or Simi or any of the project team to learn more information. I'm sure there's those on the line that are doing remote monitoring elsewhere that might have some good collaborative options and possibilities. So we'll bring up the poll to get some feedback for this particular session. Thank you again, Kara and Simi, a great presentation, lots to dig into now, I'm excited. <laughs> and while you're filling out that poll, we're going to invite you to our next session, starting at just after 1.30, which is entitled Co-Development of a Research Agenda for Perinatal Digital Innovation with Patient and Health System Partners. You can navigate to that on the left-hand side of your panel. Again, Kara, Simi, appreciate your time and expertise. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much.